In this one, we're gonna add in Bootstrap to our Django project. Bootstrap is a open source front-end framework that allows you to have a really awesome site in a very short amount of time. Bootstrap is formerly known as Twitter Bootstrap, and it's available on getbootstrap.com. Um, and I've used this quite a bit. Uh, there's a lot of customization you can do to it, but if you don't know that much CSS and you don't know that much JavaScript, Bootstrap is great because you can get a lot of things done very quickly without having to know that stuff. And the best part about it is it's mobile first. It's made for mobile sites. So it's it's a responsive uh, web uh, framework. So this is what responsive means, is if the browser changes, the entire page changes and it changes well with that browser. Um, you've probably seen sites on mobile browsers where you have to zoom in with your fingers or something. Um, that is not a responsive site, where in this case, everything about it is responsive. So you can even see the images uh, change sizes as well, and even their location and just how it flows is just much better. In fact, Bootstrap was made to be mobile first. So what mobile first means is the emphasis is on mobile because, well, mobile is booming. So most sites are consumed on mobile or sites are consumed on mobile more now than they've ever been. And that's only going to continue. And mobile, of course, can be a smartphone and it can also be a tablet or even these new internet netbooks and stuff like that. Um, so it, it really depends on the browser size. But if you have a huge browser, like in my case, I actually have a pretty big browser. If you're on a laptop, like a 12 inch laptop, you're probably going to see it a little bit closer to this size, right? Um, uh, on yours, obviously, in the video, it's going to show up the same as mine. But um, my browser, I still even have side around it. So um, Bootstrap really handles all that stuff very well. All right, so let's actually implement it. And we will do a lot of stuff with Bootstrap down the line. But what you're going to want to do, just like in Django, you're going to want to default to, to the documentation because whatever the documentation says is going to be the latest and greatest version of Bootstrap. Um, and that's going to be something that you're going to want to make sure you default to. Um, that being said, some things might be a little different. Some things might be exactly the same. Uh, but again, the documentation will be there. And what, what we try to do is make it general enough that you can still do it no matter what time you look at it. Um, and also have still the concepts there and the concepts in mind that you need. But the main thing is for us is we actually need to set it up in our project. So let's actually go into getting started. And there's a few ways on how you can actually use Bootstrap, right? So you can use the CDN itself. Um, so CDN stands for Content Delivery Network. If you remember back to us talking about those static files, CDNs, well, they do a very good job with static files because what happens is, especially like Bootstrap or jQuery or all types of things, um, you if you go to a specific site, and it's using this link for that CDN, the next time you go to another site like that, it's gonna already be in your cache because it's the exact same file and it's linked to the exact same place. What that means is it loads a lot faster. So normally I would recommend that you just do this, but I'm gonna show you how to do it where you don't use a CDN because that's actually very important for when you're first getting started out and for your own customization stuff because you may or may not want to use just the default stuff that comes with Bootstrap. So down the line, I would prefer that you use this, especially for the defaults. And then for your customization, you'll use the static stuff, which is like what we're setting up just in just a moment. So let's go ahead and jump into the examples here on the right-hand side. All we're doing here is looking for examples that we can work off of. So you can pick whichever one you'd like. Um, what I'm gonna do is this static top nav bar one right here. Go ahead and click on that. And this is an example of a lot of sites. Um, if you've ever been on codingforentrepreneurs.com, you'll see something looking very well, exactly like this. And as you see me pulling into codingforentrepreneurs.com here, you can see that, I mean, it's definitely highly influenced from Bootstrap. And there's a good reason for that. And that's because we use Bootstrap purposely on our site because we teach it. We teach you how to use it. So we want you to see it in action and how you can custom customize it so it doesn't look so much like a template. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's actually take a look at this page source. 
So a few ways to do it, you can control click or right click if you're on uh, Windows and you can go to view page source. You can also go to view developer, view source. So that's another way. Um, every browser for the most part, you can see the, page, the source code. Um, so this is how browsers read websites actually. They read it through the code. They read all of the HTML code and it turns it into something like this um, or something different. So really every site, the backend looks fairly similar. Um, now, if you want to see a more complicated one, let's say we go to springwise.com. Oops, go to springwise.com. And we take a look at this site. So very cool site for innovative entrepreneurial ideas or just different ideas in general. Uh, but let's go ahead and look at the page source. So view developer, view source. Let me go ahead and close out the main page. And we look here, there's a lot of code going on, right? There's just a ton of code. And it's really not going to be that easy to follow if you don't really know what's going on, if you don't know how to read it. Where on the other hand, the view source or the page source of Git Bootstrap is very clean and organized. It's, very, it's not very much code either, but it is showing us how we can actually take a look at this code in general. Um, so now what I'm going to do is actually go ahead and close out the SpringWise code, just showing you that for an example of what's going on with all the different codes. And then we can go ahead and copy this entire thing. So from line one, notice it says one, all the way down to line 96, really. We're gonna take those open and close tags. Go ahead and copy this. And I'm gonna go back into Sublime Text. In my templates, I'm gonna make a new file here. And I'm gonna call this file base.html. In later videos, we'll explain what base.html is. But for now, this is where we're gonna put all this stuff. All right, so now that we've got this in here, let's go ahead and save it. And we are gonna go into our homepage view where home.html is being rendered. And also this is the URL. So in our view, instead of um, it being home.html, we're gonna change it to base.html. And again, this is only to see this template running. Uh, the context and all that stuff, doesn't matter if it works right now, we'll get it working later. All right, so we load up the base, uh, we wanna reload it web page is not available currently and oh because we're running the server on a different port so let's just go back to run server and we'll keep it at that 8000 port and we refresh in here boom so this is an example of css not coming through so this is cascading style sheets not showing up this is a really good example of that it's because it doesn't look anything like the example right so it's not showing up like the example at all um, so I'm going to show you how to get it working with the CDN first. So let's go ahead and go back, back, and then we're back at this bootstrap CDN. So I'm going to go ahead and copy all this, the whole thing, and go back into that base.html page, and we're going to paste it in here. All right, so in the head document, paste it here. And notice that it's below this stuff, okay? All right, so going back in here, we refresh, now it's working. So that's what a CDN does. It allows us to use code from a different area, but we don't want that. Let's delete it. That's how you would use it if you wanted to use it later. So we go back, we refresh, and now it's there. Of course, I'm saving it each time I'm going back and forth. Okay, so now that we've got this, we want to actually get those CSS files. So going back to that example, um, I can just go forward because I didn't really change a whole lot. We could go that way, or we could just look at the code. And we see the different style sheets. So if it says real style sheet and if it ends with .min .stylesheet or .css, that means it stands for cascading style sheets. So that is giving us all of the colors and the padding and the sizes and well, just making it look like this. So if we click on these, it'll actually take us to that code. So this is the code for it, right? So as we see here, we have the code for it right there and I can click on the top two and that's all you really need right now. You don't have to worry about anything else. And so now I can actually save these with going to file. You can go to save page as, or just hit control S or command S, depending on what computer you're on. And then this file we want to send to our, well, hopefully you've guessed it, but we want to send it to our um, static DIRS location. So static files DIRS location. So documents or desktop, and then try Django 18 and static and ENV, no. Source, static and pro are static. And then we want a new folder here. And this is for organization purposes. We put it into CSS. 
You don't have to do it this way, of course. It will work if you don't, but I highly recommend against it. Uh, the convention is to put CSS in a folder called CSS, to put images in a folder called IMG or images, that either way, um, and then to put JavaScript into a folder called JS, all kinds of JavaScript. Okay, so now we put it into CSS. And then the other one, so we got the bootstrap.min.css, and then the other one, which is navbar static top.css. And we'll put that one in as well, also in that CSS folder. Notice the extension is being hid, hidden, but it is still CSS. All right, so now we've got those two things saved and into our project itself. So static and pro CSS is now here. Cool, it's actually coming through. Now let's actually go back to the documentation to that part we skipped, which is this right here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this and bring it into our base.html. Bring it to the very top. So load static files, this is called a template tag. This is loading the static files template tag. So that means we can actually use our static. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this and I'm gonna use it as reference right underneath this bootstrap stuff. But I'm gonna comment it out with command slash or using, you can just type these out as well. Um, okay, so this is the format on how we can load our static files. Now we already have bootstrap.main.css and we already have a static folder for it. And this is how we will load it. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and paste it right below. And to change this to what we want, well, the parts that we definitely have are CSS and bootstrap.min. So we put it into a folder called CSS and we have a file called bootstrap.min. These other two files don't matter um, because of how we have everything set up. All of our settings.py is pointing our static being those static files there's, right? It's not, we don't need to reference our static. We don't need to reference static in pro specifically because at the bottom of this, we do it here. Yeah, so back in base. So now following this format, we use a curly bra bracket, the parentheses sign. We're gonna use a single quote on both sides of the file and then curly bracket, or excuse me, parentheses, curly bracket, or percent curly bracket. And this right here is virtually what it is, but we also wanna put static here. So this is the template tag and it's loading or looking for this specific file. So now that we've got this, we can copy this and put it underneath the navbar static top and do the same thing, except the navbar static top needs to be just like that. Okay, so this one right here, we don't need. I'm just gonna go ahead and comment that out. Nope, it's not letting me. So let's take the end of that one and do that. Okay, you could also delete all this stuff if you want. Uh, a lot of this stuff is for debugging, which we don't need to worry about. Okay, so now I also wanna comment out the old ones, the old linked ones that actually do not show up. So now we've got these static files coming through. If we scroll to the bottom, there's a few other ones like bootstrap min, um, and then this viewport one, which I'm not gonna worry about quite yet, uh, but let's go ahead and save this. And what we wanna do now is let's go ahead and take a look at our page, load it up. It actually does load. Uh, and it does load even though we don't have this inside of our static root. So if we look at our static root, it's not there. Um, so you'd wanna get in the best practice here of doing python manage.py, collect static, say yes, and then run the server again. So notice our static files were, were moved over and they also came into static root and it says CSS and now it's in there. And then if we go back into our project that we are now running the server, we refresh, this is also coming through. And it's actually showing it. Uh, and the reason that it showed up before is because we're in development environment. So it will still look for the other versions of our static. So it will still use the static files there. But when you go pr production, when you take off debugging, that's not gonna work. Also, this will not show up, right? So the, those all types of things there will not work, which is a good thing. And it's something that you should really consider uh, when you're building stuff. Um, so that's it for getting the CSS stuff working. Really quickly, I'm gonna just do the um, JavaScript stuff. Um, so if you notice this first one, it says Google APIs, that's, a, that's another version of a CDN for jQuery, so we don't need to do anything with that. Typically, if you see HTTPS and then Google APIs for something, that's probably a CDN, just like uh, we saw Max CDN on the other one. And you can go back and look at that if you like. 
Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and click and open these. Click and open these. And then save these two. So the first one is workaround bug. Save this. And then make a new folder in here called JS. Save that. All right, close that file. And then the other one, which is bootstrap min uh, JS. Save this. Also there in JS. There we go. That one's downloaded and saved. I'm gonna close out these other ones. And then I'm gonna go into my base.html, scroll to the bottom, and change these to being the static file stuff. So static and then single quotes around this. I'll explain the single quote stuff in just a second. So static and single quotes around that. There we go. All right, so those stuff are gonna work. But since we just downloaded it, we wanna do python minish.py, collect static, and yes. All right, run server. Notice our JavaScript stuff moved over. Perfect, that's what we wanna see. And why is it single quotes? It's because of how we have double quotes on the outside, so single quotes have to go on the inside. If there were single quotes on the inside, there'd be double quotes on the outside. Or single quotes on the outside, double quotes on the inside. That's how that part would work. Okay, so now we've got our static files actually coming through, and you could do this exact same thing with the icon, uh, which is the fave icon, uh, this right here. Uh, you could do that exact same thing too, or anything else that is somewhat related. But as far as our JavaScript and CSS, all that stuff's ready. We now have Bootstrap on our site. So we can now start talking about how templating works and why we even added this base.html. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, let's keep going.